Hey, my name is Kirk Johnson. I'm sitting in Bill Rose's backyard on the banks of the Columbia River at Vantage, Washington. And from here you can see this amazing bluff of the Columbia where the river is cut down through layer after layer after layer after layer of basalt flow. And these things flowed out in eastern Washington about 15 or 16 million years ago as these volcanoes that just sort of oozed out liquid lava that just flowed across the landscape and destroyed what was ever there. So any forests that were there just got burnt and knocked down and kicked over just like they do in Hawaii today when Mount Kilauea erupts. But every once in a while when those um, fissures would erupt lava, the lava would flow into lakes and those lakes sometimes had waterlogged logs lying at the bottom of the lake and as the lava hit the lake water started to cool, of course the water started to boil, the lava started to cool, the lava would pillow up and big kind of taffy like blobs of lava would sort of push their way around those submerged logs and trap and bury the logs. The outer part of the log might burn a little bit, but by and large, these logs were trapped and buried by lava. It's a really unusual situation. Normally petrified trees are buried in sandstone or mudstone in sedimentary rocks, but here in Vantage, they were buried by liquid lava as it flowed into lakes. And then once those logs were entombed in the lava and the lava cooled, then groundwater percolated down with dissolved silica and the logs were petrified. And the petrified wood from Vantage is some of the most beautiful petrified wood in the world. It preserves the cell-by-cell -cell structure of the different logs. And we find a whole variety of these logs, um, different kinds of species, things like elms and sycamores, there's dug fir, there's different kinds of conifers and broadleafs. But one of the more surprising ones was ginkgo. Ginkgo today grows only in Korea. But here, 15 million years ago, there were ginkgo trees growing right here in Vantage, Washington. And that's why we call it the ginkgo petrified forest. It's named after that very rare log. And only a few logs have been found of the ginkgo, so it's quite rare. There wasn't a whole forest of it, but it was a mixed forest. So a forest of broadleaf trees, big conifers, and they're big trees. Some of these trees are three or four or five feet in diameter. And you look at the landscape now and go, wait, what gives? Because it's not exactly a forested landscape today. But realize that 15 million years ago, the Cascades weren't what they are today. The Cascades were coming up. And today, the Cascades and the Olympics block the Pacific moisture as it comes across in the Gulf Stream. So the rain falls on the west side of the Olympics first, and it falls on the west side of the Cascades. By the time you get to Ellensburg, there's not much rain hitting the ground. That's what we call a rain shadow. But if the mountains aren't there, there's no rain shadow. And 15 million years ago, that Pacific moisture came rocking across Washington State. And Washington State was densely forested with this very interesting forest that's not like the forests anywhere in Washington today. There's a lot of things that lived here 15 million years ago that are either extinct here or extinct worldwide. So another example of how the planet's always changing, climate's changing, mountain ranges come and go, the weather and the climate changes, and plants and animals respond to that very dramatically. So 15 million years ago, this would have been a forest that's unlike any forest alive in the world today. Today, it's sagebrush and lava fields. Huge difference, but what it means is this is one of the coolest places in the world to find fossil wood. They say the data's in the strata. That's all you need. 